Hey, Bill, don't you just love going out in the middle of the desert and primitive camp? Absolutely. Some of the most beautiful places in the U.S. are out in the middle of nowhere, and they don't have hookups. They don't have hookups, and if you want to use your accessories and your equipment, you're going to have to have, you know, a lot more robust 12-volt power system. And, you know, most of these trailers and fifth wheels come out of the factory, if, if you're lucky, with one Group 24 uh, 12-volt battery, and, and that's supposed to make everything last all weekend. But I'll tell you what, if you want to spend some time out in a primitive location, you're going to need to have a, a system that really works. Now, the, the trailer that we're working on here came from the factory with that one Group 24 battery, which is pretty anemic, and it's not going to make it, it won't last very long. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a complete 12-volt DC transformation, all the way from batteries to inverter to switches and everything else that goes along with it. By the time we're done with this project, then this trailer is going to have a system that will allow anybody to spend a lot of time in a primitive area. And we're going to show you step-by-step step how to do it. If you're looking to upgrade your 12-volt DC power system in your trailer, fifth wheel, motorhome, camper, any RV, a great way to go is the Trojan 6-volt golf cart batteries wired in series. And Bill, God, we've been installing these batteries for what, a million years? Yeah, for a long time. And I mean, th there's a huge difference between a 24, group 24 12-volt battery and these group 24 6-volt batteries. <laughs> The 12 volt batteries run maybe about 85 amper hours. This T125 runs 240 amper hours. And these Trojan batteries, uh, and the, this is the T125 configuration, this is one of the best quality golf cart batteries in the business. They've been around forever, and you can depend on the quality, get long life out of them, especially if you maintain them properly. And they have, these have more cycles than any other 6 volt battery out there. What you can really do with these batteries is because they've got such heavy duty plates. I mean, these batteries are about, what, 80 pounds a piece. Uh, you can discharge them and charge them multiple times over many years without degrading the quality of the battery. And a lot of batteries can't do that. So these batteries give you the kind of, the kind of you know, support that you need when you're in a primitive environment where you know, you're really dependent upon battery, battery life, especially if you're using an inverter. If you, know, you want, but want to sit out in the desert there and you want to watch uh, TV, you're going to need some, uh, you need some uh, power. And, and if you want to use a microwave, hey, you know, needs a lot of power and these things will do the job. And there's no reason why these things shouldn't last at least five years with proper maintenance. That's right, that's a whole other subject, but as long as you, you know, these are open cell, uh, open cell batteries, so they do require that water is, is maintained and you must make sure that, they're, that you have a proper charge rate. You don't want to undercharge them, you want to overcharge them. And there are, there are really good ways to do that and uh, we'll show you how that's done. For our 12 volt DC transformation project, we want to use the best of everything that we can find, including cables and switches and everything. So in, in your experience, Bill, of course, you know, uh, there's no sense putting anything together if it's not going to have the right equipment to go with it. Yeah, and so, otherwise you're just not going to enjoy it. You're going to have a constant problem when you're out there. That's right. So we're going to do it the best way we know how, and that's to use high quality materials. And we're going to start off with a four gauge battery cable here. Uh, this stuff is marine grade cable, which is, uh, it's going to give you good longevity and it's going to, it has uh, great quality to it. And then the connectors, Bill, we're going to use these uh, uh, non-insulated connectors. And we're, going to, we're going to crimp them on ourselves, And then we're also going to use the shrink tube to make sure that everything is sealed properly. And you want to make sure that these battery lugs are really crimped correctly. If they're not crimped correctly, then you can get heat buildup, voltage loss. And you don't want to be doing the the old hammer on a rock routine, because that's, that's not the way to, to crimp a, a terminal. We're gonna use a professional crimper in this project here. And I like to use shrink tubing at, on the ends of the cables because it gives it a really nice professional look, and it's a clean professional look. And it really lasts longer than black electrical tape anyway. Oh, absolutely, especially if there's any kind of uh, uh, moisture in, in the area or in the, in the compartment. So what we're also gonna do here is we're gonna use a high quality switch, an on-off switch. <clears throat> this one here is a Perco switch, which is, uh, you know, very popular in the marine industry. Uh, the reason we decided to go with the Perco switch because it's probably one of the best switches out there. There are a number of others that you can use, but this one has got a great reputation for quality and longevity. And these switches do not spark because they're marine. So if you have to mount this in your battery compartment and you ever have any kind of gas in there from the battery, That's right. there's no spark and it's completely safe. 
And then also one last uh, point when it comes to, to uh, putting in switches, I also like to use a, a ground lug because, you know, Bill, when you go into the compartment and you see it looks like a bunch of spaghetti inside there, I, I can't stand that. I just want to see the cables connecting the batteries, and in this case, we're going to have a cable that connects the, the batteries together and so we can put them in series. And it also eliminates corrosion. I mean, you get, yeah. you get 10 terminals on one lug and you get corrosion and something's bound to go out. I can't, I can't stand it when you, when you try to disassemble the cables and, and it feels boing and all these cables go everywhere. It's just, just not a professional look. So we're going to use a ground lug here along with our switch. So by the time we're done with it, the compartment's going to be neat and clean. It's going to be easy to get the cables on and off these batteries when you have to maintain them. And the other thing, the last thing that we want to put in there is, is a high quality fuse. And this fuse here comes from the uh, stereo, high-end stereo industry. There, you know, we, it, it, we could also use a uh, breaker, uh, which works fine. If you can't get, find, your, find a breaker locally, and sometimes it's difficult to find, um, just go to your stereo store and get one of these fuses. And in this case, and we'll talk about it later, we're going to use an 80 amp fuse. Yeah, these fuses are really designed for high energy, for a high amount of draw, so. High quality connections are, are well, well done, so I think. And if you're gonna use that, when you're using it with battery cable, because it is stranded, you're gonna need to tin the end of the cable to get a good connection. And we'll show you how to do that and everything else later on. We're gonna use a number of products for our 12 volt transformation project, including a new converter. The converter that's in this trailer currently has a very poor output and it really will not do a proper job of uh, charging and conditioning these batteries. So we're going to use an IOTA 45 amp converter which is compact and easy to install. Now Bill, this one's got a multi-stage uh, circuit built into it which makes it very very suitable for the kind of charging we're looking for. Yeah, multi-stage being bulk absorption and float and float of course is where it gets down to almost no charge at all and it, it really with a with a plug-in, it's, it's pretty much a direct replacement for a lot of the converters they have now. It's very lightweight, it's easy to install, it's, uh, it, this is gonna be you know, a very simple process, and boy, I tell you, it's gonna make a huge difference on how these batteries stay conditioned over, over the years, and we'll definitely get a lot more years out of it with the converter like this than if we were to use the one that came with the trailer itself. So what we also wanna do is we also wanna be able to use uh, our TV entertainment systems uh, without having to be plugged in. Yeah, what, I mean, that's one of the things that you buy an RV for is due to a little, a little, a little boondocking. So our choice for this project is to use the, the Xantrex ProWatt SW, which is a, a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now the reason, our thinking here is, is that we're, we're not really interested in running a microwave or anything else that's, that, that's heavy usage. We're gonna use the entertainment system primarily. And this, this, this fifth wheel that we're working with has, has a TV that's uh, and a surround sound that's that's built inside. The TV can also come outside in case you want to entertain people, uh, you know, on your patio. And in order to do that, you have to have some kind of a, you have to have uh, you know 120 volt AC power. And we don't want to be running the generator while we're trying to watch a TV. So we're going to use the Xantrix, which is a really compact unit. And, and Bill, they've got a, a, a transfer switch designed just to plug in, so it's going to make installation pretty simple. Man, it really does. It, it, and, and this thing is really lightweight. It, it, it's so easy to install, you can't believe it. You know, we'll show you how to do that. It's, it's really a lot more simple than it looks. And then we're going to, then we're going, we want to monitor everything that we're doing. And, and one, one of the best ways to do that is to use the, the Xantrax Link Light, which is a, a monitor that goes beyond, you know, the blinking lights that you have. You push your button and say, battery, okay. We don't want to go there. We want to know precisely the, you know, what we're, you know, the amp hours that we're actually using. We want to know what kind of charge rate we're getting. We want to know how long we got before we're going to need to, to recharge the batteries. We want to know when our batteries are full. This thing is a very powerful device. It's got, a, it, it provides a lot of information. And again, it's not that hard to install. No, and it's, this thing is going to tell you before you're in trouble with the batteries. That's and then right. you, it, once you get in trouble, it's tough to come back. Right. So once we once we install all these all these uh, products, including switches to make things work easily, so you don't have to get out and turn things on and off, like we're going to have a switch for this inverter that'll be inside a remote switch, and then uh, once we do that, then we're just we have to. Well, obviously we're going to have to we're going to have to put our, our batteries in a compartment, and, and and we have it looks like we're going to have a real tight condition here in our battery compartment, 
And so what do you got for that, Bill? Because we're going to have to keep the water in these batteries because they're open cell batteries and you're going to have to make sure that you add water periodically. Yeah, so that's where this comes in. It's a, uh, a battery fill system. They, it comes with a pump. Everything hooks in. You can see it comes in. It's, it, it takes place of your regular caps here. They have a check valve in them, so when you're filling these with a pump, which we'll show you later, it's going to automatically shut off when it gets to the proper level. Right, and it's critical to keep the, the battery water level proper in a battery like this. Otherwise, you end up with having longevity problems. They don't service you as well as that they should. And so this is going to make it much easier than having to sit there and struggle with the with, you know, a turkey baster, right? Absolutely. I mean, especially, you know, these things are so heavy to pull them out and put water in them is just ridiculous. And, and the older the batteries get, the more water that they tend to use as they're being charged. And that, that's right. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to top off this system with one more thing, which is actually related to the, to the water because, because these are open cell batteries, you know, they have a tendency to do a little bit of gassing and, and corrosion can result. And, and what do you got for that, Bill? I've got this... There you go. We've got this thing, this battery mat. This is a, a unique uh, product here that we're going to cut to size and it's going to go be, be beneath the batteries, right on the, right on the trays. Now what this does, this absorbs any kind of corrosion, neutralizes the cor corrosion, so you're not going to have all that white stuff that you typically see in a battery compartment. Keep these batteries nice and clean. Keep the compartment clean. We don't have the corrosion eating away on the metal. Yeah, if 10 years down the road, you don't have to replace that metal battery tray. That's right. So we're going to show you how to do all this. By the time we're done, we're going to have a system that's going to work really well. And you'll be able to sit out there in the middle of the desert and not have to worry about 12 volt power. Yeah, I think you're going to like it. It's going to be fun. This fifth wheel was delivered with only one Group 24 12 volt battery. And that's not a lot of power if you're going to take this fifth wheel out and it's in a primitive location. So even though this compartment is designed for two batteries, you can only get another Group 24 or maybe a Group 27, but we want to go beyond that. We want to put the golf cart batteries in there. And if that's what you need, we're going to show you how to do it. About a week before we started the rebuild on our battery box, we took these measurements so we can go to a metal shop and have the battery box configured. So what we did is we used uh, 10 gauge mild steel and we had it sheared and broke. The next step was to remove the bottom bracket. Now this bracket is only big enough for a group 24, maybe a group 27 battery. Now before we even got started, we wanted to take the battery from the top out. We don't want to have any kind of explosion. Once the bottom bracket is cut out, we use the grinder to smooth out the old welds. Okay, to mount the side plates, uh, we drilled pilot holes and then we uh, use 5 16 inch lag bolts to, to bolt it into place. So the next step was to weld in an angle support bracket, and this is going to give support to the bottom plate. Once it was determined that the bottom bracket fit nicely, it was welded in place to get ready for battery indexing. In order to properly index the battery, it had to be measured first. Once the battery was measured, we marked the bottom plate. Once the rear indexing bracket was cut to size, it was tack welded in place. Next, the battery is put in place to mark where the side brackets are going to go. The side brackets are then welded in place. Holes were drilled in back and then the front, and then we installed 5 16 inch all thread to be used to fabricate the hold down bracket. The battery is set in place for the final fit of the hold down bracket. Once that's done, the, the front all thread is put in place and then the brackets set on top of it and then bolt it down. So make sure that it's nice and snug and won't move. The front all thread is disassembled so the battery can be taken out of the compartment. Then it's ready for priming and painting so we can make sure that both the inside and outside are prevented from getting rusted. Now that we have our battery compartment all ready to go, we're going we're gonna to install the batteries. Now, before we do that, we want to line the battery trays with a material called battery mat. Now, this is a unique material that traps and neutralizes battery acid. It's made of 100% U.S. made recyclable material. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut it to size, and it's real simple to install. Cut it to size, stick it on the, on the, on the battery tray, put the battery on top of it. When anything gets comes out of the battery any kind of battery acid comes out of it it'll be neutralized by this material and you'll never see that white corrosive 
buildup that we typically get in battery compartments. And this is very important when we're dealing with open cell batteries like the, the six volt uh, golf carts that we're going to install. So Bill, let's measure and get this thing in. Okay. Give me the tape measure. All right. Yeah, let me, I'll just holler out and you, you can write, write it down. You want me to write this down? Because I don't know yeah. if you can remember that long, huh? I won't. So you write it down. Okay. Okay, we have, let's do the, the nine inches. We're going to go nine inches wide. Okay. Let's go 14 inches long. Okay. Okay, now, the thing is, and this, we've got these hold downs here, so we're going to just, or these actually did, we've got these. Um, well, we're going to go brackets. inside, yeah, we're going to go inside the, uh, the index tabs here, but we're, I'm going to need to do something with this, so. Right, why don't we move, yeah, we'll remove that first. Yeah, let me just remove it before I cut that. And then we'll put these right back on. Now, we're using the existing battery straps that came from the factory when we're going to install the top battery. And then we're going to use the, the, the battery uh, tie downs that we installed when we built the bottom compartment. Okay, not very sophisticated, but it'll keep it in place. All right, Bill, let's. Yeah, you need a tape here? Yeah, I'm yeah. probably going to need that again. Okay, so we're going 9 by 14. Okay. Let me get this thing down here so you get a little bit flatter surface to work with here. Uh, let me have this felt pen. Okay. Let's do that. Maybe you'll see black on black there? Yeah. All right. Should cut pretty easily. Nine by 14. Okay. Okay. Here, I'll trade you that for. Actually, you want to use this still? No, I'm good. I'll just, oh, I'll just, just cut it. it I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm okay. going to cut it right there on the guide. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Should be fairly easy to cut. See if it fits, huh? I have no doubt in your abilities, Bill. No, and it, of course, the tape measure never lies. We never, all know never, that. Never. Hey, that looks pretty good. That it fits perfect. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let me put these brackets back in okay. for the for this battery strap. And hopefully the screws will be long enough. I think you'll get some compression yeah, on that battery. I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely perfect. All right. Okay, let's do the bottom. Perfect. One. Yeah, give me the uh, give me the tape measure. Let me measure the bottom one. Okay. And we don't have to worry about the tight. You want to write this down? I'm ready. So we are at let's go eight and an eighth. Mm -hmm. And ten and seven eighths. That'll give it a nice snug fit. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, what was the width again? Okay, eight and an eighth. Ten and ten and seven eighths. Ten and seven eighths. Okay. This stuff is really easy to cut. Yeah, I yeah. figured it would. What be. What a great idea. <coughs> Sure makes it a lot nicer and okay. Let's see if that thing fits. Mm. All right, fits good. Okay, had a right. great fit. So there you have it. We're ready for the batteries. Uh, battery Mac can be found online. Uh, just just look it up on uh, Google. You'll find it.
Okay, now that we have our compartment all ready to go, we want to set the batteries in place, but we want to be able to get to the, to the, to the cells here to add water. Now, that's, that's going to be virtually impossible when we put them in this compartment because the clearance is so restricted. So we're going to use this uh, Flowrite. It's a pro water filled device for batteries, which allows us to do it from the outside. And we're going to go through that step by step to show you how it works. And we need to put that in place first before we put the batteries in. So let's, uh, let's start with that process here, Bill. First, can you explain what we have here? These are the devices that are going to take place of your caps here. We're going to remove the remove the caps and put these in. And these things automatically stop the flow when it gets to the, to the proper level, right? Right, there are check valves built in here. And, and you can see we have a T here where, so there, there's multiple fits. You can use multiple batteries, two batteries, four batteries. Right, so but we have a little bit of a complication here because normally batteries in a battery bank are next to each other. Right. And so you don't, you don't need as much uh, tubing to put them to together but in this case since we're gonna have one on top of the other and there's gonna be a little bit of a distance we kind of have to use some of this tubing here to, to make the connection. Yeah so we're gonna connect this uh, we need some hose to go from the top battery down to the bottom we'll, we'll just utilize part of this they got plenty here. Okay that's fine and then we have a bulb here that you did you just use the distilled water right you use distilled water right from the one gallon. Right it just pumps it right out of there it, yeah. it, it you have a quick disconnect here. It's really simple. There's a check valve here that keeps the acid from flowing back into the bottle. Mm -hmm. It's a great Perfect. system. Well, let's install it. Let's start with this one You here. want to pull those we'll caps, and caps and I'll, I'll pull these Now, here. one thing you want to be careful about. Now, this is the electrolyte. This is acid. So you don't want to be getting very sloppy with this. So, you know, move your caps slowly. Don't be, you know, flinging around, you know, the caps so you get uh, battery acid all over the place because it will damage your clothes and it's not really good to get on your skin or especially in your eyes. Yeah, now these are new, so theoretically they really don't need water, but we're gonna kinda- but That's okay, we could top them off after we get them in the compartment. Okay. You wanna turn that one? Yeah. Oh, turn them tight. Yeah, and let's not over tighten them. We don't want to, certainly don't wanna break yeah, them. there you go. You wanna do- Okay. Got this one here. No, you want to have them snug? And you can see how simple that really is. So let's make this the top battery here. Okay. Let's, let's so do that. So if you're going to do that, maybe you need to, since this is going to be facing out, so we probably want to have this going that way. Yeah, and it, and it, 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 swivel. it swivels. It, they have O-rings, so it'll go anywhere. Well, we have extra, extra connections here. What are we going to do with those? Like, do we have caps? Yeah, they actually come with these caps. Want to oh. do a couple of those? Yeah, let's do that. No, they pretty much thought of everything. So yeah, I'm going I'm to cap these two on either side here because we're going to we're going to utilize this side of the T here. Okay. So now again, we don't really know how much we're going to use of this of this tubing here. You don't need this much length here typically in order to hook up to your bowl. Yeah, cuz the, the pump it, it has a really long hose yeah. on so it. So we just got to have access to it so at least we can so we can make the connection. Right. Okay, so I guess so let's we put go, this huh? one in first. Yeah, let's you want to do that? Okay. This is the top one, and it'll be real fun. You want to help me with it? It's kind okay. of heavy. Okay. Yeah, now that we got it in there, can I get that on? Yeah. Now we're going to be able to get to the to the terminals here. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do, but we'll be able to get our hand in there, and you know, by feel, we're going to be able to make the cable, the cable connections. And you'll see later on that we're not going to use a whole lot of cables inside here, so it'll be very clean and easy to do. Okay, you're gonna just tie that thing down. No, well, it looks like it's gonna grab pretty good. You don't want those batteries going anywhere. No, especially the weight of these things. That looks good. So we're we're open here. We're down here. So um, here, let's put the other one in, and then we can cut mm. this to length. Ready. Yeah, this one's compartment's a little bit easier to get to. It's a little bit bigger. Okay. Oh, how's that? Perfect. Okay, now this one we built our tie downs for it. So this. Well, let me cut this to length first. Yeah, I think that's so we can kind of get the yeah. rest of the hose out of the way. You want to hand me those? Uh, here you go. The cutters. Do we want to go here? I guess that'll work. We'll just go straight down. Here you go.
You know what, Bill? We have plenty of uh, tubing left here to connect. Plenty of tubing? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and connect this one. Yeah. Okay, so what happens, we're just putting the two together, and then when we hook up this bulb into this fitting here, it fills everything at one time, all the cells at one time. And I'm going to go ahead and do this tie down while I'm here. This is kind of a close one here. Yeah, it is pretty close. Yeah, but... But once you get it in there, you know, like we said, we're not going to be moving that very often. So. Yeah, thank God. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to be doing this once a month. He did a great job on this battery box. This is, this is really good. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it both down. Okay. Looks like we're almost ready to go. Looks okay. good. Okay. Battery strap is tight. Okay. All right, so the next step Looks is great. we already have it connected, so uh, you wanna connect this piece in here? Yeah, let me connect this. Okay, now. Perfect. You want me to try that? You want to give me the pump? Let's try it. Yeah. I, even though these batteries are new and they should have been topped yeah, off. they're pretty close. So Yeah, let's just kind of double check it. What the heck? Okay, we'll so what we're going to do is just going to put the one end into a bottle of distilled water, and that's all we're going to put in these batteries is distilled water. And we're just going to pump it, and it should, in a, it, with the, with the uh, um, cutoff there, it should be right there. And it doesn't take very long. Like we said before, there are check valves, so you really can't overfill this. So there, there was no resistance before, and now it's tight. So, so, so that's it, you're done. Yeah, so we're full. So that's the process. It's pretty simple. When you need to fill your batteries, you just hook up the, the bulb and the, and the tubing in, into your uh, gallon container of distilled water, and away you go. Before we mount the inverter, converter, and the other components on the wall inside the compartment here, Bill needs to modify the access panel that goes into the breakers and the existing cables that go to the batteries that came from the factory. So first step is to take the panel off the wall. The next step, the panel was taken to the bench and marked, and a hole was drilled about center point. Once the hole is drilled, then the panel is cut in half on both sides of that hole. The panel is then taken, the first half of it is taken back and screwed back onto the wall, and that will be the wall where the components are going to be installed. And then the other half of this panel will be put on after the wires are routed through the access hole, and that will keep the, the wires gathered really nice and neatly. So Bill, what are you thinking about? Uh, as far as uh, putting the inverter and the converter, let's maybe you can, when you're done with that, we can take them out and kind of size no, I, them up. I think there's a good spot here. Yeah, let me let me at, hand you. Let me see these things. We got. We're going to deal with both the inverter and the converter. Now the, the inverter is heavier and larger than the converter, so probably the best thing to do, Bill, is maybe we'll put that on the bottom. Yeah, I think so. It's, yeah. Yeah. I guess that I, the idea here is that we we want to try to make sure that it's is out of the way as best poss as we could possibly do because people have a tendency to throw stuff inside compartments and you don't want stuff to be you know on top of your converter and inverter because you want to, you got to keep an airflow around it and of course it's definitely a no-no to, to use any kind of flammables around it so um, maybe we can uh, we can ma maybe mount them both on this this wall right here yeah I kind of tuck them up in the corner here let me use I'm going to use yeah. one of these as a spacer yeah you know this, these is, little kind of a, this is kind of a, a a little bit of a tip here if you will um, you can put a block of wood under it or, or whatever you need to, to raise them up. In this case, I like to raise them up so we can have airflow all the way around it. And the other thing is it actually makes it easier to mount to the wall because we've, we have access to the feet that, on, that are on the bottom. So let's, uh, let's try the inverter first. Okay, hand me the inverter. Let now, me... Bill, I believe that this inverter calls for mounting horizontal, that you cannot mount this thing vertically. Right, it cannot be mounted right. vertically. So I'm going to kind of set it. You need some help holding this thing in place? I don't think, let's see, let me go this way just slightly. Okay. Man, that looks pretty good right there. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I'm looking on the angle here, but I think it looks pretty good. 
I think it looks it great. It looks straight to you. Oh. That looks pretty good. You know, I've got uh, stainless steel screws here, so we know that the won't the rust. Okay. Stainless steel screws are good. Okay. okay, I think it'll stay by itself right now. I think you're right. Okay, the whole idea of using this uh, PVC coupler here is to is to keep the pressure off of the um, inverter from pulling down here so it'll, so we have a better shot of it staying on the wall, uh, especially since we don't have a whole lot of wood here to, to screw into. Yeah, I'm going to need it. Oh, yeah, you'll need that extension tight. to get yeah, in. It's, it's kind of tight. So it would be nice if that was magnetized, but... It would be um, really nice. Yeah. Boy, that's, well, that's... Mm, Hmm. Got some tape, Bob? Yeah, let me get you a little piece of paper. <laughs> I, think. I think we're going to need a, a touch here. Just a little bit of tape to hold that screw on. Little stainless steel screws are a little tough. You can't use magnets. Okay, try that. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, just got to be real work. steady. What a hand. All right, I think that that's looks gonna, good. I think that's going to stay there. Okay, the next step is to get the converter installed, and we're going to we're going to mount that right above the inverter and uh, do it virtually the same way. This the converter doesn't weigh as much as the inverter, so it's going up on the top. And then, uh, so which way do we want to put? How about that? if we have a fan going this way, so we can have access to the connections here, and yeah, then just as long as we leave a little space there, I think we'll be fine. Okay. You just, I you just put another one of these spacers in there just to keep the, the the weight off of it. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. But hold yeah. that, and I'll get I'll get some screws here. Let me get a couple started here. Got those stainless steel screws going again. Yeah, I got a little more room here though, so yeah. hold it. Got it. Mm, perfect. Okay. One more. One more. I think we have it installed. Okay, mm. that's really nice. Solid. Yep. That's Spacers it. tight. It's out of the way. Even if stuff is put into this compartment down here and above, it'll be out of the way. We don't have to worry about this, these things becoming damaged as time goes on. So Bill's got three more items to install before we get to the wiring. And the first thing we're going to put in is going to be this on-off switch. And this is a Perco on-off switch. It's really designed for the marine industry, but it works perfectly fine for RVs, especially the fact that it's rated for 250 amps, which is, gives us plenty of capacity for what we're, willing, what we're needing to do here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mount it on the wall first because we, need to have, we have to have the position where it's going to stay permanently. And then we're going to have to re remove it later because in order to get to the back here so we can hook up the, the cable. So anyway, Bill, can you get this thing installed first? I can. A little bit tight in here, but I think I can get it. It's a good thing I'm not any bigger, huh? Give me one of the other ones. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a ground lug. The reason we're using a ground lug is because we want to keep the battery compartment as clean as possible. We don't want a bunch of ca cables going into the battery compartment. We're going to have only one negative cable coming out, which will connect to this ground lug, and everything else will go will be connected to this ground lug from then from that point. This ground lug will be on the outside here, so we'll have easy accessibility. So, Bill, find a good place for it. Piece of cake. Starting to run out of room here, though. I hope you don't have any more. Well, I think we have a little bit more wall left there. 
Okay, the last thing that we're going to put on that wall is going to be this uh, battery shunt that's going to go on the, on the, from the negative terminal of the battery uh, to the uh, ground lug. And the reason we put this thing in place is because we're going to hook up the, the Xantrex link light monitor. And that link light monitor is going to give us a lot of information about condition of our batteries and in 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 our usage. And uh, it, it, it's a really good tool to use, especially if you're out there in a primitive environment where you don't have hookups. So it lets you know, you know how many amp hours you're using and, and what your charge rate is. So you can, you can actually have full control over uh, you know, charging and, uh, and usage of your battery. So Bill, find a good place for this one. I can do that. Starting to run out of room though. I hope well, that's about it. And, and one of the things we have to consider is that we have to we have to allow clear pathways for all the cables that we're going to be putting in there. And there are quite a few cables that are going in, in, in and we'll get to that a little bit later on. Okay, our next step is to install the transfer switch, which is actually designed to go with this inverter. So, hey Bill, we're gonna wire this thing up uh, in, a, in a special way here, aren't we? Yeah, be, because the inverter needs to be so close to the battery, it's usually about five or six feet because of voltage loss, but the transfer switch needs to be up by the breakers, which just happens to be at the other end of the trailer. So the most effective way to do this is to put AC all the way forward in order to do that we're going to run an extension cord up there to plug it in. Right, and the reason we're going with an extension cord is not because we, we're, we don't want to use the Romex, which we don't because it's more difficult to work with, but this system is designed to just be, it's a plug and play type of system. So really what we're doing is, uh, is we're going to just extend the distance between the transfer switch and the inverter, keeping the inverter close to the batteries, and we're just going to use an extension cord, cut off the end, and route it to the, to the back of the trailer. Yeah, and, and we're going to run it inside the underbelly, up out of the way, so it doesn't need to be in conduit. Let's get started. Let me drill a hole here for that to go through, okay. and then we can cut the end off of that. here, so it's pretty Okay. All right, now let's make sure we cut the right end off here. I think this would be it. I think that's the end. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, give me a little bit more here. A little bit more? Just a little bit more. Ready? All right, go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to just route this uh, extension cord from here to the front. Yeah, go ahead and pull it all the way through. Oh, perfect. Okay, do you have the uh, cables, the, uh, the cable ties in here? Or the... Uh, the... I'm going to plug it in, make sure, we're, yeah. make sure we're looking good here. Yeah. Actually, I think that's going to work out absolutely perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So we'll put some cable clamps on this in a little bit. Okay. But let's run it forward first before we put the cable clamps on. So this breaker box on this trailer is a little bit tougher to get to. That's why we're going to do this. Normally, we'd like to put the transfer switch right here by the inverter and run Romex right to the breaker box. So if it were two feet away, it'd be perfect, but it's not. So we're going to run this extension cord all the way to the back. Okay, we already routed our, our extension cord, which is a 12 gauge extension cord from our inverter, which is in the forward compartment. And now we're going to get ready to install the uh, Xantrex uh, transfer switch that's designed for this pro pro watt inverter. Now it's not it's, it's not a very difficult job, but it does take some concentration. So, okay, Bill, let's get at it. All right, give me this thing. Um, I see you have the distribution panel out already. Yeah, I already took the distribution panel out and I've already determined which circuit that we're going to run with the inverter. So by, we we just simply turn the TV on, right. flip a couple of breakers until it goes off. Right. In this instant, the existing converter is actually attached to the same circuit, so we're going to delete that because we're putting in a three-stage converter anyway. Okay, so, well let's get the, we're putting these wires together. Now this is a pretty simple job, but I but if you're not really comfortable working on, on electrical components, I really recommend that you go to your, you know, to a to a professional, to your RV dealer who knows how to do this, you know, a certified mechanic. Alright. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just tape this off for, for future use just in case they wanna use it someday. 
it doesn't need to be taped off. It's not going to be live, but just in case somebody looks in there and goes, oh my God, there's a live wire laying in there. Right. Okay, we got that. I'm going to pull it down here out of the way. This is the actual converter down here, so it's not going to work any longer. I've already punched a hole in the back here, so I'm going to put in the cable clamp now so we can run our cables through there. Okay. Not a great spot to get to. It oh. gets a little bit crowded in some of these. Yeah, this one here is not that crowded because there are not that many accessories that are no. installed in this rig, but it can get pretty hairy for a, if, if you've got a lot of wires in there. So I'm going to pull this, the Romex from this circuit completely loose because it's going to go to the transfer switch. That, so I'm going to pull a, the hot wire, the common, and the ground. What we're going to do is we're going to mount this new transfer switch to the back of the distribution panel here. I can't drill holes through there because the converter is right below where we're going to mount this. So I'm going to use some 3M double-sided tape that will stick this thing there permanently. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of strips on there. And that tape is industrial strength. It, it, that, that transfer switch is not going to go any, anywhere. No, and it really makes it a lot easier. If I had a choice, I could drill the holes. but So all I'm doing just knocking out these little plugs in the back here for the cable clamp to go through. It's really simple and they left two extra spots in here so it made it great for installation. Got another one? Great. Thank you sir. Already punched one of them out. Now somehow I gotta get my fingers in here and get that. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah. Got it. All right. It definitely helps to know a little bit about this stuff. Yeah, I don't think you want to do this the first time out. Yeah, if you have the basics, you probably could easy enough. Um, now, I've already tinned the end of these wires already because th this primary wire, the stranded wire, it doesn't do well under a screw. So we're going to wire nut the other ones. They don't need to be tinned. So these are already tinned, ready to go. I can clamp them under the... So you're going to want to do that on the bench before you ever install one of these. Uh, got it. And I actually put the side with the cable there tinned. I put them on this side on purpose so that I had more more length inside the box because we have to go all the way up to the common rail. Okay, so that's stuck in place. Let me get a little angle on here. I'm going to strip the other wires now. So these are actually going to go under a wire nut and they don't have to be tinned. Now, hopefully I've got enough slack here. Let me pull this one ground wire out a little bit. Give me some more slack. I'm going to cut the end of this off a little bit too. It's got kind of a big yeah, old burr on it. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, wire nuts. Let me see. Let me try. You know what? Maybe the yellow. I think those yellows probably have a better shot at it. Yeah, let me try that. I'm going to do the kind of the ground first because it's, it's tougher. It's a shorter piece. Yeah, we definitely... You don't want to have any live power going into this thing? No. Not fun. Mm. Yellow is perfect. So let me tape this before... I do the other because I'm not going to have a whole lot of room that down in there. Always tape these wire nuts when you put them together because, boy, if any of them, especially the hot wire, 
If the wire nut comes right. loose, nothing drops out of there. It can make a mess. And make sure that you get a really tight bond here and always pull on it so to make sure one of the other wires don't pull out of there. So I'm gonna pay a little bit more attention to the hot wire here because that's the one that we really don't want floating around in here. The chances are it's gonna yeah, it trip a breaker, but... But why take the chances? It's better to have it... Yeah, we don't want to take the chance. Secured. And last but not least, Pull on it. Looks good. Looking good. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to take close. the tinned wire and they're going to go. Black, of course, goes to the breaker. Give it a tug, no problem. The white. The, it, the stuff actually pretty easy, the, the black and the white and the, the ground, they're all separated, it's all it's all together, so it's pretty tough to make a mistake. Yeah, just the hardest part is working with short leads. And the ground wire. Always double check them and pull on the wires to make sure that you got them good and tight. Okay. All right, so I guess the next step is to uh, put the end on our extension cord you know let me let me tighten these the cable clamps first before oh, I forget yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. and these don't have to be super tight because we're not working with Romex so you don't want to over tighten these and, and really mash the wires down mm -hmm. okay so everything let me double check here the connect uh, AC source, connect the load. We're on load. Mm -hmm. So okay, now because we because we, we cut off the end, so we were able to route the extension cord through you know the close quarters. We're now going to put this. Yeah, so we're just going to put a new end on there. Yeah. And it makes it really easy. That way, we don't have to cut a gigantic hole in the thing to. Right, it, it would have been not very practical to try to put a hole this big in the uh, rig. Well, and. A lot of the time, you just can't even mm -hmm. get it. You can't even string them through the where we've gone with it either. Yeah, and you know, keep in mind that every RV is going to be a little bit different. So maybe the amount of uh, extension cord, maybe you won't be using extension cord. Maybe you're going to be using Romex. So everything's dependent on placement of the inverter and uh, where the distribution panel is is mounted. So as long as you keep that in mind, and you have to be pretty flexible when you're putting together a system like this. Yeah, the inverter has got to be close to the battery. There's just oh, yeah. no way around. Oh, it. absolutely. It, it just within, within you know, a foot, two feet. That's about it. You know. And sometimes you can't get there though, and you you just have to, you have to go a little bit longer. And of course, you can end, you can fix that with your cabling, just by you know using a, a, a heavier gauge wire. No, they. The AC can go a lot further AC, than DC. Yeah, that's exactly why we, we, we took this uh, route. And they've made these connectors so easy. Yeah, now. It's really such a pleasure to to be able to use these now. Okay. So there again, pull on each wire. Make, sure to not make absolutely out. the one. Because all it takes is one of them to drop out, and then you're chasing problems before you even get started. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, we're just about done here. Now this really makes it easy. It's really a, a clean installation. It looks great. Tighten this clamp down. Uh, even though it's going to be back out of the way here, yeah. we don't want any problems. So we're going to plug the relay right in here, which is essentially the same thing as plugging it into the inverter where the extension cord goes. Exactly. So let me tuck. I'll go ahead and put this back in. Put that guy back in. Let here. me just, I'm going to double check everything that we've done. Transfer switch is tight. All the wires in here look great. Everything's tight. Looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna put it back together. Okay, now that Bill's wrapping up the distribution panel, uh, we've got uh, a lot more work to do. We've got some wiring. We've got to make sure that we get our converter hooked up and we've got a couple other accessories. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, it's time now to provide power to the uh, converter. Now, in order to do that, we got to go inside and pick up some power inside and do some wiring. So follow me. So Bill, did you find a good place to get some power? I did, I'm gonna have to move the pump and a couple of other things. But oh man, what a mess in there. Yeah, I've seen worse. I guess you just move the pump and a couple of the hoses and we can get some space for yep. the J-Box. Huh? But I did find this, the Romex going to the outside outlet, the patio outlet, so oh, yeah, I can put a J-Box here, cut these wires, and I'll cut a hole through here so we can run the Romex to the new converter that we installed over there. It's on the other side of that wall. Hey, perfect. All right, let's get started on that thing, huh? Just have to move the pump a little bit. It's actually more room than I'm used to. Mm, that would give me enough yeah, room. That looks, looks good. good. Yeah. Luckily, they left me a lot of room back here. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually pretty roomy compared to a lot of them. It just that an awful lot of hoses and wires running around. Yeah, and this is actually on the ground fault circuit interrupter, which is what we want. We always want the converter on a ground fault circuit interrupter. Perfect. Let me move these lines here as well. They're kind of in the oh, way. Here, take this rag here. Put a little water down there. Okay. This is for just a hose for winterizing. Right. <clears throat> but let me get this one pump, the discharge side. Actually, I'm gonna take the thing completely loose and kind of move it over here. This you gotta one. move it pretty fast, don't you? <laughs> well. You gotta be faster than the water, Bill. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Okay, that gets that out of the way. All right. Much better. Give me a little bit more room to work. Yeah, in that's there. a whole lot more room to work. That's a lot. Okay. Okay, so the whole J box. Next? Yeah, let me just kind of set it down here and make sure that I have enough slack. So that looks good. Um, let me let's punch out some of that. You want to punch out these knockouts? Give me this one here, these two here, and one on this side. I can do that. <clears throat> And I'll cut these. And again, I guess we need to caution everybody that it goes without saying that uh, you unplug from power before you do this. Boy, we'd know by now if we weren't. Boy, I tell you what, right. we would. These, yeah, that works. Piece of cake. Let me loosen these before I get started. I don't have to fight it. Okay, so you want to give me that drill and I'll cut a hole. All right, here you go. 
So I know that we're on the other side of this inside wall, so let me let me put one down here. Okay. Let me go on the out inside yeah. the compartment and see if I can retrieve that. Do you have that flashlight? Um, it, that's out there somewhere, but okay. I'll, I'll put this through as far as I can. Okay, okay see coming, it coming through, through Bob. Bill. Can you get it? Got it. Just pull whatever slack you need and I'll cut it here. We got plenty of slack now. We're, we're in good shape. Okay, let me cut it in here and I'll go ahead and attach it. Okay. It's easier to strip these wires out here than to put them into the J-Box and strip them. And it, you notice that I left the J-Box loose because it's really a lot easier to, to fight these heavier wires when I'm trying to get multiple wires together. Okay. Now, I'm going to start so I'm going to match these pairs up that I had before I had them separated I don't have a whole lot of slack here so I'm going to like I said before we always tape these things pull them make sure they're tight looks good. I don't have a lot of slack, so I'm going to tape these as I go. It makes it a lot easier. I'm just lucky I had this much slack to begin with. This one's gonna be tougher because I'm gonna I'm gonna have multiple wires here. I'm gonna have three instead of two, so I'm gonna need probably some of these red wire nuts. It's always a good idea to make sure you have the right size wire nut for the number of wires that you're putting together. Otherwise, you can have problems with heat. They'll melt and they're not able to handle the amount of current is being drawn and they won't fit right. Pull them, make sure they're all tight, tape them. They do make bigger J-boxes if you need a little bit more room. Doesn't hurt to get a bigger J-box, but it doesn't help if you don't have slack. when I get started I try to get all the tips of these pretty much at the same place before you start if one gets lower than the other it's gonna wind up not getting twisted into the, the wire nut see just like that one you see why I pull on them one of them did, didn't get twisted in 
I don't have a lot of room to work with here, so it's kind of hard to get them even. Pull on them. Looks good. Tape them. And one more. I kind of lost this ground wire back down in here, so let me get it out of there. Pull on them, make sure they're intact. Getting a little bit tougher to get the tape in there now that we have multiple wires. Now I'm gonna mount the J box. It was easier to leave it loose before. Give me plenty of slack. Doesn't take a lot to hold this. It's not, there's nothing in here. There's not gonna be any pressure on this. Now we're gonna tuck all these down in here so we can get the lid on. put a cable clamp on this just to kind of tie it down a little bit because it's a little bit loose. Never hurts to put a cable clamp on. Okay, Bill's got the J-Box all buttoned up and now the last step to get power to our converter is to wire up our duplex receptacle and mount it inside the compartment. The side benefit here is that now we'll have an extra outlet in case we need power inside the compartment. So Bill, hooker up. Pretty simple process there once you get the Romex in here. Yeah, this is the easy part. Yeah. Doing that J-box is a lot where, where, where are we going to put this? I think we're going to put it right there so we can have access. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it right here. It's easier to kind of do it when it's loose, but yeah. I'm going to put it here. And then if he needs a light or something in the compartment. Right. He's got an outlet right there. I think that's going to be that's going to be pretty valuable for, to the own, for the owner. I mean, I've got one of these outlets in my compartment in my coach, and I use it far more than I sure, use the really outside one. They're they're really handy to have. Yeah. While Bill's prepping the wires, I just want to say one more time that that this installation is custom to this fifth wheel. And it'll vary depending on the, the type of fifth wheel and the location of the compartments and where the batteries are at, where the distribution center is at, and, and also the type of converter that you're using. Okay, we're ready to cable up the batteries and the inverter and the converter. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I start over there is I'm going to take off my metal here. So I'm going to be working around uh, live wires and battery terminals and we don't want to have any kind of metal that on our wrists at the time. Now, the, our first step after this is to come back over here where we had the original battery cables. Now these battery cables are going to be pushed or pushed and pulled through the wall so we can reconnect to our switch and to our ground lug. So in order to get that done, I'm going to cut off the ends first and then I'm going to slip them through. Bill's going to pull them. You ready, Bill? I'm ready. All right, let me get these cut. You gonna do a negative or a positive first? I'll go with the, uh, the, the negative. Ready? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. We're just, uh, just about out of here. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay, good. Now these are the, were the original wires that hooked up to the batteries, the, the one battery that was installed from the factory. Okay, Push I'm it. at the end. I'm at the end. Okay. 
Okay, now, Bill, I how, got it. Yeah, how about how about how far do we have to go on these to? Or we just want to take them. Yeah, no, let's just strip them right here and, and, and just do them right there. Leave so the slack. Easy. Yeah, I can yeah. push them back in the wall right, a little. Here you go. You want no to do the honors of stripping them? And I'll get the connectors. Now we're going to use uh, six gauge connectors. And so what happens we have a few of these. Now we're using professional crimping tools. We're not going to use a rock or a hammer. Uh, I highly recommend that you, that you don't use a rock or hammer because you're not going to make a good connection. No, we're also it, going to if use, worse comes to worse, you can even solder these lugs on. Right, and we're also going to use shrink tube to clean up the ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of the shrink tube going. I'm just going to take half of it. All right. How's that working? Almost got it. Watch yourself. I don't want to. I don't want to draw blood this early. I don't want to draw blood either. Way too early for that. Okay, looks like we almost got that one done. All right. Perfect. Okay, now we'll just do it. slip some shrink tube over each one of those. So we don't forget. One thing you've got to remember to use the shrink tube before you make the crimps. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've put them on first and oh, missed. Now it looks like we've got to cut a little bit of that off. Yeah, now. give me the okay, give me the yeah. cutters. It was kind of hard to strip this and you want to so hold looks, the cut. Yeah, it looks like we need about three eighths of an inch off of there. All right, go ahead and position that thing in there. That's good. Oop, Wait a minute. Here, right about there. Try it. We can always cut more. Ooh, that looks good. That looks give good. me just a tiny bit on this one here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, you got crimpers? Ready to crimp. Hope I have my Wheaties today. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Just make sure you don't mistake my finger for that lug there. <laughs> you got it in all the way? Yeah. That's a ratchety crimper, so it'll, it will, uh, you have to go all the way through it. Ready? Yeah, go. Okay. Mm, great, looks good. Okay, do it. It may look a little silly that two people are doing this, but trust me, this is difficult for one person. Ready? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Bring little... me the heat gun. And let's, uh, let's We're going to use the heat that. gun to shrink the tubing. Wouldn't you like to be the guy that invented this? Oh, no kidding. Man. Smart guy, huh? And rich. And rich, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that looks Some great. people use a flame. It's a lot cleaner to use a heat gun. Yeah, the flame will just burn it. All right, how do we look? That looks great. Right, You're more. so good at that. Let's do another one. Oh. Uh, did I pass, huh? Yeah. You did great. I think I've done one or two of these wires over the years, or cables, I should say. We both have. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite parts of the job is cabling up a system. It, when you're done with it, if, it, if it looks nice and clean, boy, you're really proud of it. I love it. Okay. Looks really good. And one of the things, the advantage of having shrink tubing is it'll keep some of the corrosion from attacking the wire up inside. Whereas if you just wrap it with black tape, you can get corrosion up in there. This really makes a nice seal. Okay, we're getting ready to put the cables onto the batteries. And the first thing we're going to do is build a jumper. So, hey, Bill, got a pretty good idea how long of a cable we need there? Yeah, I'm on it. All right. Pretty scientific measurement there? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Okay, now remember, we only get one cut at this. Okay. Ready? You okay with this? Go. All right. Perfect. Well, we're just going to put a connector on each end of this. Now, this cable, as we've said earlier, this is four gauge cable, which will work really nicely for our so application. I'm going to gauge this here, and I'm going to strip it. Okay. These anvil pruners even work great, great for this. And you know, when you're done, Bill, I've got a couple plants out there, bushes. You, that need <laughs> to be, you want me to do the pruning? Yeah. Would you do the pruning for me, please? Oh, I thought there. you had a gardener. Well, you know. <laughs> Hmm. All right, nice work. Nice work there, Bill. Let me cut this puppy in half here. Yep. And we're going to use 
these five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. That's what fits the battery. All right. You got the crimpers. Okay, I get the I get the good part, right? Okay. You ready? Yeah. Try it. Ah, perfect. Okay, oh yeah. There you go. Absolutely perfect. Okay. No, one more. You know, it's actually marked. Smaller, but hey, what the heck? As long as it works. Okay. Right? Do it. Ready? Ooh, perfect. Okay. Okay. Oh, a little heat gun action. You want to use the pliers there, or you think you got? Yeah, no. Let me use the pliers. There. <laughs> the cable starts getting hot after a couple mm. minutes. I could try not to get your hand there. Yeah, the, yeah. Don't burn the hair off my fingers. Now, of course, you know it takes a little bit more time to do it this way, but in the long run, you'll be a lot happier. No, it, does, it takes a little bit longer. It's so cleaner, and it, like I said before, it prevents a little bit of corrosion. And Okay, one more. Right there. And we got Looking the stuff good. oozing out. We're there. Looks great. Okay, now let's uh, connect those guys up. Want to connect it up? Yeah. Um, you'll need a wrench for that? Yeah, it's... Uh, you know what it is? Hey, give me a, a 9 16. Okay, here you go, Bill. Got a 9 16 for you. Okay, hold on. Let me get them started first. Now, yeah. these are six volts, so we're going to wire them in series. That's we are cool. going from a positive to a negative. We're not going from positive to positive, negative to negative, like right. you would do with two 12 volt batteries. That's right. If you were to if you were to, to wire up in in parallel, then you would go negative to negative and, and positive to positive. And here we're going from positive to negative and we're taking two six volt batteries, wiring them up in series, which will give us 12 volts. All right, how are you doing? This one's gonna be tough in here. Yeah, it is a little tight. Fortunately, since we have the watering system in there, we're not gonna have to take these batteries out too often. Okay, Bill, you got that in place? I do. All right, okay, let's get the uh, positive cable going here. Yeah, let's cut a little jumper wire for the fuse. Yeah, we're going to do that. What do you think? Do you, yeah, we're going to use this uh, 80 amp inline fuse. I think it's going to work just perfectly. Yeah, so we're going to actually going to have to tin this, yeah, we, the so, end of this. So, so about how long do you think we need here? That, that's good. Here, cut it off right, right here. here. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to make it too short. It's just you got no, to fight it too much. With it. How do you like it right that's there? That's good. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Okay, now, why don't you uh, Let me strip, strip the end that and we'll tin that. Big wire here, Bill. It takes a lot of heat to get this thing to tin. Yeah, no kidding. Good thing we're not using one odd, huh? Oh, no kidding. I think you got quite a bit of solder on there. You could probably just kind of, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I think we're. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, let's make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, I think we're Oh, that looks good. Yep, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, let's let that cool off, crimpers. Put the sucker on there. I'm gonna try to hold this without getting a hold of that hot end. Yeah. Ready to roll? Yeah. Ready? Go. Good place. Uh, let's see. Heat gun. Hands out of the way? Yeah. Mm, that looks good. Yeah, it's nice and... Nice and tidy there. Okay, that one looks good. Okay, we'll get the other end of this thing tinned. As soon as we get it heated oh, up. Oh, I huh? tell you, it takes a lot of heat. How's it coming? Yeah, it's really good. I think we're in pretty good shape there. Mm, just let yeah, me get that this, looks good. Let me just get this smooth out a little bit. Okay, I think we're there. That looks great. All right. So okay, now we need to. Uh, yeah, we need to. We're gonna have to install it yeah. through the uh, through push the through. Uh, the firewall. Okay. Um, so I'll push it through. And uh, yeah, you want to. Yeah, give me this in yeah, here. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we don't we don't waste too much of this, this cable because, boy, I tell you, with the price of uh, copper, this is pretty expensive. Wow. You're gonna have to push it quite a ways for me to get a hold of it. You ready? Yeah. I got it coming through. Okay, hang on. Okay, 
I got it. Yeah, yeah you'll have to keep pushing because I can't Boy, that seal that he put in here, I'll tell you what, gives the manufacturer credit. It's going to keep moisture out. Okay, hold let's it right there. Hold it right there so we can finish up. Yeah, let's pull just, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt to have a little extra. We got, yeah, we yeah, got plenty good. of, yeah. yeah. We got plenty of cable. Plenty of cable. Okay, so let's get the fuse installed over here. You want to get the fuse yeah. installed? And then we can cut it down on the other end. Now this fuse is designed for a number of different size. Here, give me the end here and I'll feed it on. Okay. You just got to take the, the insert out of this thing. All right, in you go. Oops. Perfect fit. Did you put the plastic on? Yeah, there you go. I did. Good and tight. Let me pull. Oop, yeah, it pulls all right. Get the other side. Oh, perfect. Right. Yeah, one, you know what? While we're at it, why don't we take let's the insert take out of this yeah, one? Yeah. yeah, let's get it out so we're ready to roll. And then I'll put it on the cable here and it'll be ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go. Yeah, bring one. it to me. I'm ready for you. You ready? Uh huh. Oop, got it. Perfect. Yes, yeah, beautiful. And that fuse is just going to be laid. We're going to lay it in there. It's not going to go any place. Yeah, you're so have, it, it's actually going to hook up right there, and and like so you have so. perfect access if you if you ever blow that fuse to make the change. Okay, we have a couple of items to install here that make the both the inverter and the battery system <clears throat> work a little bit better and give us more uh, monitoring capability. And actually, the, the main part of that is going to be the Xantrex Link Light, which is a monitor, which which is a very powerful tool. It has it, it gives us uh, information that that we need to have as we're using the batteries and as we're recharging the batteries. And once we do that, we're going to install the on off switch for the inverter and that allows us to have remote you know access to it so we don't have to go outside into the, into the storage compartment to turn the, the inverter on and off so what we had to do is we have to figure out where where these items are going to go now our preference was to be able to find a place close to the entertainment center because that's where we're going to use most of the uh, power that's going to come from the inverter and we also need a place where we can we can read this this readout here fairly easily without having to get down on our knees. So, Bill. Yeah. Plus, we we we've got to be able to get the cabling to it. That's right. So, what we've done is we've actually done some exploring in here to find the best place to do it. We looked all around and we found out that we can cable from that storage compartment all the way to this compartment and up this wall fairly easily with maybe just drilling one hole. And then the other thing is is that. Uh, we were we were going to we want to be able to make it so you know obviously there's a way to mount this and we've got a couple of tricks that we're going to do to uh, to show you how to get this link light in, installed so and, and wired up so bill i think the first thing we need to do is verify that we have the space in here yeah let me i'm going to pop this switch plate off and pull let me just pull this switch out so i can get back in here give us a little bit of access i know there's well, we looked underneath here because we, we have access to this uh, speaker enclosure here. That's where the the, uh, the base speaker is. We do, and but I know there's some wood framing in here, which yeah. there is, and I've got to stay between that, especially with the monitor because of the size of the hole. Oh, yeah. So let me measure. Let's see. We are, look like we're at three inches. So let me see the yeah, monitor. I think, oh, yeah, not a problem at all. That'll okay. work. So, and we have the depth. Yeah, let me check the depth. It looks like we got plenty. There's a lot of depth there. Yeah, way okay. more than that. We got an inch to spare. Okay. So now, now we may not be able to center this thing. It looks because of the, the position of the studs here. Well, it, yeah, and then the, the, the switch isn't centered. I mean, there's really nothing centered here. So, but I don't want to hit one of the studs when I drill that the hole size, that two and an eighth hole. So I'm gonna just make sure I stay between the stud, which is three inches. Okay. So. Mm. We're going to be at an inch and a half. Um, where do you want to put it up about here? Well, you know, the higher the better, but you know, well, let's do it within reason here. So if we can get it right about here, it would be nice to have. Okay, let me get a center point there. 
move that. Let me, let me, uh, so we're, what are we, we're here at two and a half. Two and a half. And then another inch and a half will give us the center. So what do you think about that? Right, so right here. Yeah, I think we're gonna be Yeah, that's gonna be centered right between the two studs. Does okay. that look good there? Yeah, I think that's fine. I would like to get it about that high if we can. You wanna get a little higher? Okay. Yeah, if we can do it. Let me go ahead and pull it away. That's what I like. The true measurement eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Yeah, I think we're gonna be right. okay. Wanna do that? Okay, so let's while we're while we're at it, you wanna find a place yeah, let's for find this? A place. This is not as critical. Actually, this thing here has got a status light and it has a switch. It's a fairly simple piece of equipment. So uh, where it, where it's at is uh, it it can be any yeah. of these places. Here. Well, why don't we just, let's just, just pick a place here? How about how about well, let's see. Let's put this here. How about about there? Okay, pull it away and I'll kind of give us a center point. Oh, that perfect measurement, Bill. Another perfect measurement. Every time, how's that, huh? All right. So actually, you know what? This has got a template that comes with <coughs> it, with right. the on-off switch. Yeah. So, so why don't I just put the template in place? Give me a little bit of tape there. Okay, we can do that. The, just give me a couple of little strips. The template will actually make it much easier. So there you go, another eyeball. <sighs> Perfect. I mean, the only critical point here is to make sure that it fits between the studs. I mean, yeah. we're not worried about it lining up with these other pieces here because we just may not be able to get there. Yeah, nothing's really centered to, to speak of. So here's where the screws go through, and then here's where the yeah, cutout so here. Cut out, right. So I'm going to drill a corner of these cutout, and then we can yeah. get rid of this template. I'm going to get this out of the way. So remember, measure and check it twice. Well, the template really makes a oh, big help with the, temp with the template. Now again, these pieces can go anywhere. I mean, there's quite a bit of uh, wiring and, and uh, cabling that goes with it. I'm gonna drill a few more holes around the edge there. So now I can get, you wanna get rid of that template? I can, we yeah. can take that out of there. All right. And we might as well go ahead and just finish this one while we're here. I would. So it's pretty simple to. I need something. I need some kind of a hole to start, so we can get a little saw here. So I'm just going to use this unibit. And I love unibit. Thank you. Boy, I do too. I think uh, do we have a big enough hole here to get this. Hit? Yeah, we can get it started. Let me do a little bit more on the side here, just to you know, we'll go. make it a little bit easier. So yeah, you can yeah. get it through there easily. Absolutely. a little bit yeah. to kind of get it to fit. Um, yeah, let's see, how far let's, see let's try it and see how close we got here. Yeah, it's going to need a little clean up. Yeah, the, needs a little bit down this side. Yeah, fortunately, this paneling's pretty thin. Yeah, that stuff's pretty easy to deal with. Yeah, you can actually cut this stuff with a knife, but it's kind of, it's not very accurate. And I kind of like to do it by hand, so it doesn't tear up the wall when you're using power tools. Well, something this small, I think it works a lot better. Yeah, when you're using tool. power tools, you always have that oops. Yeah. yeah a little bit more. Oh, you got it. Mm. Okay, so. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's so even wiring perfect. itself. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we'll just leave that alone right now. We'll get to the. Uh, yeah, let me get a hole saw. Let me exchange with a hole saw here, and we'll, 
Why don't we cut the hole for that yeah. monitor? You want to take the, the yeah. back? Right. We're ready to go. Now this has got, uh, and, and the, the way this thing installs is it requires that you have to get a hand behind here to tighten this. Now we're going to be a little creative later on, on when we install this. Let me see this here and I'm just going to kind of double check where we are. That's true, you only get one shot at this, Bill. <laughs> I'm going to have to make it count, is that what you're trying to say? I think so. Let me just, you know, let me just double check this. We are. There, there it is, measure twice. We're at five and three eighths. Fine, okay, we'll be fine. Okay, there goes right, This is it, man. This is it. Well, there you go. That was pretty mm. simple. Want to try it? Mm, perfect fit. So, yep, wait, I'll leave go. that there for a second. And where's the. Give me the switch. Let's just kind of try it and see how they look together. See what we think. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? I think that's going to look pretty good. Yep, that will look good. Okay, Bill. We've got the holes ready. We're going to mount the uh, the link light monitor and the switch for the uh, inverter. Uh, before we do that, we're going to route some cable he cabling so we can go from the batteries and the inverter to these two items up here. So. I guess you got a found a route here that's yeah. pretty simple. Yeah, I've already kind of picked up a route here. What we're going to do, but luckily we have this little hatch here that gets down into the compartment where the inverter is mounted. They put a subwoofer in here so they're nice enough to put a door. Let me cut a couple of holes first. This cable here has got, uh, it's got a twisted pair in it and it's also got the, the color coding that's proper to hook up to this monitor. Now we're going to use five of these, well, actually we're going to use all six of them and that, that are inside this cable here. So it makes life a lot easier to route, don't you think, Bill? Yeah, trying to do individual wires. Yeah, that's, that's so much easier. As well as the uh, the cable for the on-off switch for the inverter, they just use a right. phone cord. This, this is a phone cord. That's so the cable that comes with the link light is a 24 gauge minimum uh, wire uh, that's inside of it. Now, if you cannot find the cable or you don't want to buy the cable, uh, then you can go to the store and get yourself a twisted pair and, and, and a roll of 24 gauge wire. But keep in mind, it can be a little complicated if you don't have the wire, if you don't have a color code on it, because you know, you're dealing with six wires here and it's easy to get mixed up. Okay, well that was pretty easy, Bill. It wasn't bad at all. Luckily they left that wide open under there. I love it. Oh, so we're gonna give myself, give myself a little bit of room here to work. A little bit, you know. While you, once you start on that, yeah, and, I'll, and I'll, okay. I'll get this cord this up thing up to the link light monitor. Let's get to work on this thing here. And uh, when you put this thing in, this switch for the inverter. Read the instruction because this thing comes. Uh, and most of the inverters come now. Um, with a disable switch. So if you're installing this in a motorhome, you can enable this this wire. This will be an ignition wire here. You can enable this and when you start the engine, the inverter will go off so it, it prevents you from being able to watch TV while you're driving down the road. It makes it a little bit safer. You don't drive off the road trying to watch some war game or something. So before I put this in, I want to make sure that that switch is disabled because we're putting this in a trailer. We don't have an ignition lock. Okay, we're going to get ready here to uh, to wire this up. So we're just going to strip uh, the ends of these things here. Actually, while you're doing that, why don't I put these screws in this switch and I'll just finish it. How's that? Okay. goes into the first spot here. You want me to tighten it while you're holding yeah. it or here let me hold yeah, this. Yeah you know, if you hold it it'd be nice. That it's, would help yeah. wouldn't it? It's not jumping all over the place. Oh there we go. Mm, hey we got one perfect. in there. Let's see white's going to go into the, actually the next position over is going to be the gray wire. Not bad I can barely see it. white wire goes next. Yeah, the installation is, is just one of the parts. It does have to be programmed when we're done so that it recognizes what we want it to do. 
All right, next one is the pink. Now, well, on the other end, Bill, what we're going to do is we're going to put the pink and the gray together on the other end. Right. Because that will give us a little bit better reading, battery reading. Okay. Next wire over after pink would be yellow. You see that the same way? Mm-hmm. And green would be last but not least. And obviously you don't use every position here. Green. Okay. Perfect. Now, now this looks good. Now, how are you going to hold it in the wall? Well, you know, that's what we talked about earlier. Normally, we have this ring here that screws onto it. But as you can see, hey, Bill, you can't get your hand back there to do no, that. There's I, no, way. there's no way. So what we're going to do is we're going to be a little creative here. We're going to use some earthquake putty. Now, this stuff here... It works really well. It's designed, obviously, if you live in, in, in areas where there's earthquake, where it's prone to earth, earthquake, you hold stuff down so when you do have the shaking, it doesn't fall. Now, I've been using this in my, my own rig for years, and you can put pictures up with this. You can hang stuff. It's, it really works well. So we'll take a little earthquake putty, and we're going to put it around the, the ring there and right around that lip there, and I guarantee you that this thing will stay for a long time, and it'll come out whenever you need to take it out. Yeah, the worst that can happen, it can fall out in a few years and put a little more putty on and, and put it back. And I, and I doubt it will, because obviously the reason that you buy this stuff is because of earthquakes. Now, earthquakes shake a lot. I would assume that it's the same shaking as it's inside of a, a fifth wheel. It so may be worse. It could be. Anyway, you ready, Bill? Yeah, let's go for it. Well, you want, you want to peel, to peel me off? off a yeah. Piece of this? And I'm going to leave a little bit of slack here so before I tie these wires down in case we ever have to pull it out of the wall. I guarantee you, once you start using this stuff, you'll find all kinds of purposes for it. Yeah, it, any RV has got to have. It, you can even hang pictures with it on a wall as long as they're light yeah, enough. You might want to take this down to where you, you're, you're comfortable with it. Yes. I wouldn't use too much of it because it'll probably be hard to, to get it to, to be flush with the wall. It's kind of stretchy stuff. Yeah, it so. is pretty stretchy. You can yeah. see it. It's stretched. But I'll tell you what, it'll hold stuff. We do a little sample of that no, here. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, let me start running a little bit around here. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Then we can pull the wire back, I guess, so it'll. I'm going to leave little, some slack, oh, yeah, because yeah, we yeah. never know when we're going to have to pull it out yeah, to do no, something. No, yeah. So there may be some squeeze out, but we can trim it off. How does that look? Does it look fairly straight? Yeah, that's okay. You need to do the old eyeball trick, Bill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that stuff's even the same color as the wall. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we knew that. Very we knew that when we were working on it, right, though? No, look, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, I can't even pull it that out will of there. Not, no, I, I will guarantee that that will go nowhere for years and years. Why don't you give me this? Let me do a little trim in here. Might as well trim this off, make it look nice. The other choice would have been to have to make an access, pa access panel to the back of this wall. This is a whole lot easier. Well, lot we couldn't cleaner. even get the access panel in there. There's no. too much back there. Right, exactly. Now we got this All wired right. up. What's next? Next, let's, uh, let's route the cable back to the batteries and the inverter. And uh, we're pretty much wrapped Actually, up. Glad I put that switch back. Yeah, in. you know what? We're pretty much wrapped up here, and we're gonna go outside, and we're gonna run it, route our cables, hook them up, then go test it. If you're gonna install a high-tech 12-volt DC system and put in things like the golf cart batteries and a really nice inverter and a good converter and and, and so on, you got to have a way to monitor what's going on. And the, and one of the best ways to do that is with a Xantrex Link Light monitor. Now, this is a very powerful tool. It gives you a lot more information beyond what you see on one of those panels that have little lights that tell you how much battery is left or maybe you have whatever voltage that's got. This is much more accurate and it's much more powerful. Now we've already programmed this one here and it gives you information like voltage and the percentage of battery life and uh, amp hours and amperage to, in, is in way of draw. So this is this is a much better way to keep track of what's going on in, in our systems. It's far more accurate. And, and keep in mind, you really don't want your batteries to get below 50% without a monitor like this. Well, you're never going to know. That's correct. And you know what, Bill? We've got this program. Let's see how yeah, the, other, the inverter it, works. Everything looks great. You want to try it? Yeah, let's turn this one on. Now, we've got this remote switch for, for our uh, Xantrex uh, ProSign inverter. And it's... Um, 
So we got we have light. Let's see if we have TV. I mean, we don't have any satellite or any DVD or anything in there right now. So all we're gonna do is just get maybe a blank screen. But oh. there we go. Hey, it looks pretty so good. So we're running off the inverter right now. This is it. So um, if you have satellite, you can run the receiver with it as well. This is a 600 watt, so it'll do a receiver. It'll do a DVD player, even the surround sound. Okay, we got our batteries in place, we've got our components on the wall, we've wired it up, we're pretty much ready to go, aren't we? Yeah, and everything, the, the great thing is all of the components are solid on the wall. There are cable clamps around all the cable, everything's wire tied so there's nothing hanging around. You can't snag something if you're putting something in the compartment. It's really a clean installation. And, and nothing's going to shake loose on the road either. No, not on this watch. <laughs>